the national anthem. of engineers, other principal officers of the university, provost, deans and directors, emerita professors, visiting vice chancellors from sisters institutions, your royal highnesses, top government functionaries, staff and students, invited guests, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome every one of you to today's inaugural lecture. This is the 204th in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin to be delivered by Professor Chiwumba Okafo. Topic, mentoring, teamwork, reconciliation models, and organizational effectiveness. A call for paradigm shift in accountancy profession and Nigeria. May I humbly invite the Registrar O.A. Osho de Mises to introduce the Vice Chancellor and members of the Vice Chancellor's procession. The Registrar. Distinguished invitees, you are all welcome to the 204th inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin. Please permit me to stand on the existing protocol already observed by the University PRO. It is my rare privilege and honor to introduce the Vice Chancellor's entourage, which is led by the Vice Chancellor himself, Professor FFO Orumesi. Others in the Vice Chancellor's entourage are the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor P. E. Iriwogwe, 
We also have the Deputy Vice Chancellor at Kaiwan Campus, Professor G. Eri Aremu. We have the boss of the University of Benin, Dr. V. Imagbe, who is ably represented by Mr. G. E. Iwagaru. We have the University Liberian, Dr. Luke Obasui. We have deans, provost deans and directors. We have the provost College of Medical Sciences, Professor E. Oviasu. We have the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor F. E. Okemi. We have the Dean of Students, Professor O. Aigbovo. We have the Host Dean, Faculty of Management Sciences, Professor P. O. Eriki. We have the Dean Faculty of Arts, Professor E. Eragbe. We have the Dean School of Dentistry, Professor M. A. Sede. We have the Dean Faculty of Law, Professor N. A. Inegbedion, who is ably represented by Dr. Eric Okoje. We have the Dean, Faculty of Life Sciences, Professor C.E. Okaka. We have the new Dean, School of Medicine, Professor W.E. Sado. We have the Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy, who is a Professor O.J. Akerele, who is ably represented by Professor M.U. Uhuawu. We have Dean, Faculty of Physical Sciences, Professor A.P. of Yahweh. We also have Directors. We have Director, Center for Gender Studies, Professor Mrs. E.U. Edosoma. We also have Director, Center for Entrepreneurship Development, Professor A. E. Uwubame. We have the Director, Students, Guidance and Counseling, Professor Mrs. G. I. Osaido, who is ably represented by Mrs. Mwunkuli. We have the Acting Director, Institute of Child Health, Dr. D. Iwanieri. It is now my pleasure to call on the Vice Chancellor to introduce the lecturer of the day. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I would like to stand on the existing protocol. I warmly welcome you all to the 2004 in the lecture series of the University of Benin. Today's lecture is the 57th to be delivered in my, t in my tenure at Vice Chancellor of the University of Benin. And the seventh to be delivered in the, in the management sciences and the fourth in the Department of Accounting. <laughs> As a way of providing routine updates on activities of the university, I am glad to report that academic activities are ongoing in the various faculties, schools, and institutes. I want to use this medium to further solicit the cooperation of all stakeholders to ensuring that lectures and other academic activities for the current session are concluded successfully. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our lecturer for today. He is Professor Chimuba Okafo. The title The title of his lecture is Mentoring, Teamwork, Reconciliation Models, and Organizational Effectiveness, a call for paradigms shifts in accountancy profession in Nigeria. Professor Chiwumba Okafo was born on the 7th 17th day of April 1958 in, at Umunede, Ikat North East Local Government of, of Delta State, to Mr. Okafo and Mrs. Maria Okafo, Ne Wakoyin. He had his primary school education at Ujuwe Public School, Lagos, from 1960 to 71. And attended, and attended Eder Grammar School, Umunode, where he ob obtained the West Africa School Certificate with Division One in 1978. He gained admission into the University of Benin and obtained B.S. in Accounting degree in 1982, along with the first set of students that graduated created by the, by the Department of Accounting, which was created in, 19, in 1981 to 1982 academic session. Professor Okafo had, had his mandatory national service at Egujobi, Sula, uh, Sulamon, uh, Sulamon and Co. Chartered Accountants, Sokoto State, in 1982 to 1983. He returned to the University of Benin for his MSc accounting in, 1990, in 1998. I was appointed as stand lecturer in 1984. He resigned at the rank of lecturer two to work in the accounting and banking industries. For 15 years, he rejoined the University of Benin as lecturer one in 2003 and got his PhD in business administration in the year 2006 and rose to the ranks, academic ranks to the position of professor in 2012. His area of specialization are accounting and strategic management. Professor Okafo has held various administrative positions and served in various committees within and outside the University of Benin such as head Department of Accounting 2015 to 2018, Assistant Dean Faculty of Management Sciences, Department of PG Coordinator, and others. Professor Kafo has supervised over 25 dissertation for certification in the in the fields of accounting and strategic management. He has served as as an assessor, external examiner, facilitator, resource person to several institutions, and is a member of several accreditation panels at on, at on, on a graduate le, at a level and postgraduate levels within and outside the University of, ben, University of Benin. He has over 100 publications in local, uh, national, and international peer review journals and books. And he has attended many conferences, workshops, and seminars locally and internationally to gain knowledge and present papers. Professor Kafo is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and a member of the Nigerian Institute of Management and, and the Academy of Management, Nigeria. He is a recipient of prestigious awards such as Best Student. In the, sec in the second year degree examination, Department of Business Administration, University of Benin, 1981 to 1980 to 1981. Chief Richard 
Ultram Prize for the best student in the business and, and the government in the Faculty of Social Sciences, University of Benin, 1980 to stroke 81. Is is an is an ardent reader of fiction, particularly investigative, investigative ones. Is happily married to Mrs. C. J. Uh, Okafo, PhD, Educational Management, and they are married with three children. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is my honor to invite Professor G. Wuba Okafo, a professor of accounting and strategic management, to deliver his inaugural lecture. Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Administration, Academic and Ekewa, the Registrar, Bursa and University Librarian, Provost College of Medical Sciences, Deans and Directors, Members of Council, Professors and Members of Senate, Heads of Department, Highly Respected Academic and Non-Teaching Staff, My Lord Spiritual and Temporal, Members of Grace University of Benin Alumni Association, Greatest Unibank students, family members, members of the press, dis distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the 204th inaugural lecture of Great University of Benin. I am most grateful to the Almighty God for making this day a reality. Please relax and enjoy this lecture in His presence. The first inaugural lecture delivered in the Department of Accounting was given by Professor a bully man, Richard Anao, on May 10, 1991, at the 33rd inaugural lecture series. The title of the lecture of the, is the measurement of well-being in accounting methodology. This is in the area of financial accounting. The second inaugural lecture of the department was delivered on April 2, 2015, by Professor Prince F.I.O. Izedomi as the 155th lecture series of the university. The title of the lecture is If You Want to Be Poor, Be an Employee Only, An Accountant's Perspective of Wealth Creation. This is in the area of finance. The third inaugural lecture in the Department of Accounting was delivered on November 2nd, 2017 by Professor Mrs. P. A. Isemila as the 196th inaugural lecture series. The title of the lecture is Nigerian Securities Market, The Twist and the Tons Towards Endangering, Engendering Growth. This again is in the area of finance. Today, the 24th, the fourth inaugural lecture of the department is being given as the 204th inaugural lecture series. It is entitled Mentoring, Teamwork, Reconciliation Models, and auxiliary effectiveness, a call for paradigm shift in accountancy profession and Nigeria. This is in the area of strategic management accounting. <laughs> the lecture is divided into sessions. I've taken preamble, the, pre, uh, the protocol, the preamble. The next section is introduction, auxiliary effectiveness, mentoring, teamwork, reconciliation, acknowledgements, conclusion and recommendations. Introduction. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, this is my second coming as a staff to the University of Benin. Each of the coming I call missionary journey. My first missionary journey started on September 13th, 1984 and ended on November 30th, 1988. The second missionary journey started on October 13th, 2003, and it will end hopefully when I'm 70 years old by the grace of God. So, in 2003, when I came back for the second missionary journey, two issues were promised in my mind. The first issue was the issue of specialization in accounting department. 
The second issue was the issue of mentoring. The issue of special among lecturers in the panel of accounting, especially those on senior lecturer level and above, came, was raised in the department committee when I indicated that I wouldn't want to teach financial accounting. Then a younger colleague, I heard a younger colleague discussing with his uh, friend that how can a chartered accountant say he cannot teach management, he cannot teach financial accounting? He missed the point. We are not talking about ability. We are talking about willingness. Now, the issue in specialization, one must be ready and willing to choose and focus in one area instead of being diverted into very many areas. Specialization is the mother of team spirit and teamwork. Because when each individual realizes that he or she knows only a little part of the whole, he or she is, will then be willing and ready to work with others who know other parts of the road. I was willing only to work in management accounting, which I am still working today. But I know that I don't know everything in accounting. So those in financial accounting, I interact with them. Those in public sector accounting, I interact with them. Those in other areas of accounting, I interact with them. It's a choice I made when I was younger. On the issue of mentoring, I interacted with some of those who were senior lecturers and above in the department of accounting with a simple question, who will you hand over to when you are leaving the university? Unfortunately, I didn't receive a satisfactory answer. From the above, it is not surprising that our topic today is mentoring, teamwork, reconciliation model, and organizational effectiveness, a call for paradigm shift in accountancy profession and Nigeria. The question that naturally arises in some minds is, why would an accountant choose a topic that looks more like management than accounting? That is the question that some of us might be asking. The answer is very simple. I'm in the area of strategic management accounting. My simple definition of management accounting is management plus accounting. Management plus accounting. It is using accounting information to manage an enterprise. My research interest has been focused on organizational effectiveness. In my first degree in the Department of Accounting, my project was in the area of internal control, which ultimately is aimed at ensuring that the organization has controls that are based on policies on principles and are effective in operation. This is to ensure that the organization attains its goals, Okafor 1982. In my second degree in the Department of Accounting, my thesis was on capital budgeting technique, firm characteristics and performance, Okafor 1988. My doctoral dissertation in the Department of Business Administration was on organizational characteristics, practices and performance. Okafor 2006 A. This examines strategic management for organizational effectiveness. So, from the undergraduate to the doctoral level, I had dealt with on controls and strategic management to ensure a better performance of the organization. The focus of my research has continued in this pattern. Furthermore, a closer look at my curriculum vision will show that my sojourn in the industry was devoted to the area of controls, strategy management, and management. Therefore, both in industry and in the academia, my focus has remained on organizational effectiveness. For conceptual clarification, the unit called organization in some management science courses is called firm in accounting. This firm will be used interchangeably in this lecture. Mr. Bachelor, sir, consider upon the above clarification. I will not delve into my lecture. Organizational effectiveness. Organizational effectiveness is the attainment of predetermined goals of an establishment. For an organization to be considered effective, it does not have to achieve all its goals at the same rate and at the same time. Because some goals are sometimes in conflict with other goals. Set in March 1992. Actually, they started in 1963. They updated it in 1992. Arnold and Fedman, 1986, Okafo, 2000 and, uh, Okafo 1988. However, it is for the organization to attain majority of its goals. The components of national effectiveness are profitability, growth, 
resource acquisition and utilization, ad adaptability, innovation, productivity, customers through client satisfaction, employee satisfaction and commitment, and shareholders' contentment. The term effectiveness and performance could be used interchangeably because problems relating to their definition, explanation and measurement are virtually identical. March and Sutton, 1997. Okavo 2006 opinions that performance is the outcome of work and it provides the linkage between the goals of an organization and its effectiveness. Performance provides feedback about the effectiveness of past action in attaining organizational goal, catching 1999. Reading 2006 has described performance as ubiquitous. That means it exists everywhere at the same time. Effectiveness, that is performance, is a multi-dimensional construct. Okavo 2006B. Therefore, performance is used everywhere in everything that we do as humans. Anywhere you are, you are looking at performing. So, at the end of the day, at the end of a specified period, your performance will be measured. How far have you gone? As I'm delivering this lecture, you guys are watching me to see if I will perform well. So, performance is anything that we do. It is not specific to any industry or firm. Anything that you do, even as a housewife, husband, or whatever, as a child, you are being measured against a particular goal, whether you are, you are achieving it or not. There are many factors that affect performance. This includes, but are not limited to, leadership style, okay, for 2006A and 2008A, culture, okay, for 2006A and okay, for 2008B, systems, okay, for 2006A, Strategy, Okawa 2006A. Structure, Okawa 2006A. Okawa 2008C. Skill, Okawa 2006A. Okawa 2007. Staff, Okawa 2002. 2006A. 2010. Corporate Governance, Okawa 2009. Okawa and Ibadi 2011. And Mentoring, Okawa 2006A. Okawa, Okaware, and Igu Kane 2014. Each of these impact on performance one way or another. The astute management ensures that it attains a delicate balance between these variables to achieve desired effectiveness. You cannot just face one of the variables. You have to balance them in such a way that you are able to achieve your goals. According to Henry 2003, management accounting and via organizational theory literature differ mainly on related importance of constructs and process perspective. While organizational theory literature focuses mainly on cultural perspective, management accounting focuses on the prospect perspective, where the focus is on the use of information, the role played by the performance measures, and the analysis of the organizational and behavioral impact. Henry 2003. We have indicated previously that organizational effectiveness is a multidimensional construct and therefore has various measuring models. There are various ways you can model organizational um, effectiveness or initial performance. This includes, but not limited to, goal, goal model, resource-based model, internal process model, strategic constituent model. These are the various approaches you measure if somebody has achieved his performance. In other words, using the goal model, you can see, you can check if the person has achieved his goal, so set up goals. Goals are prepared before a period, and at the end of the period, you check if those goals have been achieved or not. That is the mo goal uh, model. In my accounting literature, there, are, there, there, there is a mixture of financial and non-financial performance model to convey performance or effectiveness to an organization. The financial models are in two streams, accounting and market model, okay, for 2006B. Accounting models include return on investment, Return on total asset rota, return on sales, return on um, equity, among others. Market-based models include, but are not limited to stock returns and price volatility, which reflects current and future expectation of performance. Non-financial models include balance, balance cost card, which balances both financial and non-financial. In other words, you should be able to satisfy various sector of your of your stakeholders. Stakeholders are not just shareholders. They include students. They include your community that you reside in and other areas. You need to balance that they are all benefiting from your work. If they are not benefiting, you need to change the way 
you do your work. Desires to change traditional accounting model is because they encourage short-term decisions, game playing, block innovation and ambition, inward looking, lack strategic focus, fail to provide adequate information on the desire of customers and the performance of competitors and are historically based while performance is dynamic. Nelly 1999, Paka 2000, Debojuriji 2002, Okafo 2006A and Okafo 2006B. Now we have looked at effectiveness. That is the measure of how organization has performed. We are now going to look at the two variables we are looking here, mentoring and teamwork. Let's start with mentoring. Human resource, mentoring, human resource are the most valuable assets of an organization. These are what Drucker 2002 calls human capital. Therefore, they need to be developed to meet demands in a very dynamic and turbulent environment. Hence, Harari 1999 advocates a change of the mental model of organizational members. This, there are several ways you can change the mental model of organizational members. They include training. Use training to change their mental model. You can mentor them. You can do job rotation. And you can use discipline. This is Nokafo 2002, Okafo 2006A, Okafo et al. 2014. In this lecture, we we'll concentrate only on mentoring. Like I said, mentoring and teamwork. The word mentor is derived from Homer's Odyssey. Odysseus, before going to engage in the Trojan War, turned his son, Telemachus, over to his friend, Mentor, to teach him how to be a king and how to live in the world. Now, most of us have watched Odysseus as a film. That film teaches us how to mentor, how to lead. So, mentoring is a relationship between a mentor the senior and a mentee, the junior. The mentor, a trusted advisor with some experience in specific field of human endeavor, assists in training a mentee to develop in that specific area. In other words, a person can have two or more mentors. As I'm going around, I will tell you those who are my mentors. They are mentoring me in different areas of life. So, one person, one mentee, can have a mentor who is teaching him something to do in academics. Another person, he can also have another person who is teaching something to do in, in spiritual matters, and so on and so forth. So, you don't just have one mentor. You have several mentors to meet your needs. The senior helps the junior to learn the ropes. In Japan, it is called senpai kohai relationship. It has been developed into an institution which has been one of the most constructive force for productive and harmonious working relationship in Japanese organization. Pascal Anatos, 1981. Peters and Waterman, 1982. Okafo, 2006-8. Drucker, 2002, in his support of mentoring, indicates that leaders in knowledge-based economy must spend time with promising professionals. Get to know them and be known by them. Mentor them and listen to them. Challenge them and encourage them. That's what somebody sets out to do. You pick a person. You want to make the person a better person. Better than yourself. There are several ways one can relate to other persons. Either be dependent, independent, and interdependent. Pascal Anato, 1981. COVID-1989. COVID-1989 believes that the best relational mood is the interdependence because it creates effective and wonderful synergy between the men men mentor and the mentee. When they work together, you get a very powerful output. Cram 1985 describes mentoring in the light of inducing young professionals into business environments and differentiating and differentiate between two functions of mentoring, career support and psychosocial support. Career support is to enable the individual, learn the ropes, guide the individual so that it doesn't enter into turbulent waters. Sometimes they are
turbulent waters in organization. Sometimes somebody can escape a turbulent job, a turbulent assignment, because a mentor has said, oh no, don't give it to this person. Give it to another person. He's protecting his own. It happens in all organizations. People protect their mentee. So, you protect your own. The psychological support is helping a novice professional, professional self-efficacy and emotional well-being. You encourage him. Don't worry, you can do it. Don't worry, they might ask you several questions, but stay on focus. Focus on what you are doing. And whatever they ask you, just absorb the shock and go ahead. You are teaching the person to be emotionally stable, to ensure that it doesn't deviate from the facts. Mentoring is based on the realization that as one advances, there are certain things that he or she might not be able to do again. Um, there are some persons, um, if you give them certain things to do, they have done it when they were younger. But at this time, they are thinking of something greater and better. They might not be able to do that. They will take a mentor, train him or her to be able to do that for them. Because as you advance in age, certain other things, there are certain things that you can some other person can carry, you can carry a table alone. But when you are younger, you just use one hand to carry a table. But now you cannot carry the table. You teach somebody how to carry the table for you. Therefore, the need to train a younger person mentee to take over from the mentor when the need arises. According to Ngugi 982, every man ought to know that he who used to dance can now only watch while others do do it. And he who used to jump over the stream can now only wade through it. Ecclesiastes 31 states, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Members of the older generation should understand that they will not always be here. This is the time and season to the very younger generation with the hope of winding over to them when the time comes. I'm not going to stay here forever. Um, I have... Uh, about 10 years to go. When I came to 2003, I started developing somebody to take over from me. And I will continue to develop them to take over from me. One day, I will leave the scene. Okay? And that happens to almost all of us. When you come in, know that you are not always, you are not the best. You are, now you know a little, combined with others, that's teamwork. But mentor somebody, train somebody to do what you are doing. Okay, that is what mentoring is. So this is time to teach mentoring. Though mentoring is a very important role for enhancing organizational efficiency, it does not stand alone. If combined with other variables, especially teamwork, we can have a quantum increase in effectiveness. Teamwork. A team is a group of persons with complementary capabilities who are dedicated to common purpose and hold themselves mutually accountable to achieve that purpose. According to Warwick 2014, building a, um, a high performance team is not easy. It's a hard work. It is difficult. But it takes time. But as you get focus, a proposal team builder will achieve his goal. There are five characteristics of building an effective team. Common purpose, common values, common plans, obvious leadership, Continuous evaluation and appraisal. That's Bushman 2014. To forge a common value, a common purpose and value is usually Tommy. To get to the point where the entire, where the team has a common purpose and a common value is usually very difficult and stormy. It is therefore the responsibility of whoever is leading the team to ensure that they come to that. Once they have gotten a common purpose and a common value, there is nothing that team cannot do. Teamwork can certainly improve performance, effectiveness, efficiency. Work week 2014. The simple reason for teamwork to signally improve effectiveness is because all team players are operating their various areas of competencies. Ngugi 1982 puts it succinctly by indicating that a single finger cannot kill a, a louse. A single log cannot make fire to last throughout the night. A single man, no matter how strong he is, cannot build a bridge across a river. Many hands can lift up a weight, no matter how heavy that weight is. 
This implies that there are more benefits in combining an efforts to achieve a desired goal. Furthermore, the Bible instructs us that through teamwork, the Israelites defeated the Amalekites. Exodus 17, 9-13. Joshua was in the battlefield fighting the Amalekites. Why? Moses, Aaron, and Hor were on the hilltop. When Moses' road is lifted up, the Israelites prevail. If his hand is down, the Amalekites prevail. And Moses' hand were so heavy that he cannot continue to lift them up. So what they do? They made him to sit down. Aaron and Hor then lifted his hand, one on this side, the other one on this side. With that, his hand never came down again. Joshua was then able to rout the Amalekites. That is the benefit of teamwork. In the light of the benefits of enhancing effectiveness by teamwork, Oko and Oka for 2005 advocates that since this is an alternative source of financing, the federal government should have more positive policy of encouraging banks and other financial institutions to assist high priority sector in leasing. This is a kind of teamwork between finance intermediaries and those who need finance for expansion. In addition, E and Okawa 2005 and Emeni and Okawa 2008 opened the business combination, a kind of teamwork, impacts positively on corporate performance. Business combination could be either by major or by acquisition. Someone somehow needs somebody to help him or her in a given situation. Let us look at this thing. You see, they had a problem to climb that wall. On each, each of them cannot climb that wall on, on his own or her own. What did they do? They teamed up and they are able to overcome. That is what teamwork does. If you can't do it alone, call others to help you. They will assist you to achieve your goals. When they are helping to achieve your goals, they also inadvertently will also achieve their own goals. That is what teamwork does. That is what teamwork does. This is another kind of teamwork. They were going in a group. It is very good to go in a group. They, they faced a problem. That will have finished them. But the obvious leader called their attention to what is happening. They quickly came together and see what happened. They were able to overcome that one. That is what teamwork can do. It is smarter to travel in groups. It is smarter to work in groups. It is smarter to engage others so that you work. Nobody knows it all interact with others and you find your own area of competence line into that area of competence and you achieve your goal in the light of mentoring teamwork and organizational effectiveness there is need for the rekitting of the accountant in the use of all the arsenals he or she is equipped with this can effectively be done through the reconciliation model the orientation of the accountant for better performance, reconciliation model as a major tool. Periodically, business organizations render reports to their owners. These are called annual reports and accounts, now popularly known as corporate reports. It is important for business organizations to ensure that their financial information is accurate, complete, and consistent. Among two used to accomplish this is preparation of accounting reconciliation statement, which represents one of the most important tools in accounting. A small business owner may think that reconciliation statements are not so important, but tedious and time consuming. Please allow me to give you a few reasons which may change your perception. First, preparing a reconciliation statement on a regular basis helps that to ensure that no asset is stolen from the organization. That's number one. Number two, no reco reconciliation statement serves as a means of identifying and fixing accounting errors. Finally, reconciliation statement can assist in finding and resolving unposted transactions or mistakes. Reconciliation accounting is a process of comparing two balances to a two or more sets of related records, usually balances, from different sources of um, from different sources, accounts, system, and so on, identifying and analyzing differences and making correction, uh, corrections as appropriate. In preparing the reconciliation statement, reconciliation item needs to be found 
a reconciling item is an item that caused one or several differences between or among compared records, that is balances in accounting records. In the light of the foregoing, can the accounting profession benefit from the knowledge gained from mentoring, teamwork, and reconciliation models? The dilemma of the accountant. The accountant as a discipline, though classified as science, is not an exact science. It is guided by generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP. Due to the pretoria of GAAP, some national and international bodies have emerged to develop sets of enforceable national and international accounting standards. The latest of these standards are the International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS, and International Public Sector Accounting Standards, IPSAS. Within the GAAP and the standards, an accounting entity is expected to develop its accounting base, basis and policies in preparing its corporate report. The, furthermore, the accountant in discharging his or her duty is expected to use discretion in determining which gap or standard to adopt. Evidently, two accountants given the same set of record may arrive at different figures for profit or loss uh, and also different statement of financial position because of the different assumptions they have made. Okay? This is why accounting is not an exact science. If it is in the physics, all of you arrive at one result. If it is chemistry, all of you arrive at one result. In accounting, give two of us different data. We we'll come out with different profits, different income, and different financial statements. That is the nature of accounting. The dilemma of the accountant has not ended. In some countries, like Nigeria, he or she is expected to, to belong to one or more professional accounting bodies. Human beings do not exist alone. They have relationships. They live in groups such as families, villages, towns, tribes, uh, local government, states, nations, and professional bodies or associations. In Nigeria, the medical profession is regulated by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. The legal profession is regulated by the body of ventures while the engineering profession is regulated by the Council of Registered Engineers of Nigeria, current. This makes for quality control and assurance in the education and keeping of standards in these professions. The accounting profession is quite different from the aforementioned profession. In accounting, we have four professional bodies in Nigeria. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN, Central Public Accountants, CPA, Cost and Management Accountants, CMA, and Chartered Institute of Taxation. At the moment, as I'm talking to you, there are still bills going through the National Assembly for the establishment of other accounting or related professional bodies. These multiple bodies may lead to competition and unhealthy rivalry. The argument has always been that the country is too populated for one professional body in accounting to handle. Is that so? How is one body able to handle the entire population of the country in other professions such as medicine? They don't have two bodies, just one. Or law, they have just one. Engineering, they have just one. Is it possible for a person or a group of persons to go to national assembly to establish another professional body in either medicine, law, or other bodies. No, it is not possible. Accountants, please think carefully. <laughs> Accountants, please think carefully. It is not outsiders who are forming these bodies. It is accountants themselves who go to the National Assembly to look for how to get license to become professional bodies, law to become professional bodies. Please, let us think twice. At the moment, there are so much marketing strategies being deployed by both national and foreign accounting bodies to gain membership, especially student membership in Nigeria. In addition, when a candidate completes his or her examination, but has not completed 30 months working experience, I'm talking of ICANN now, I know about ICANN, I don't know about other laws, they have not completed 30 months working experience, he or she cannot apply for membership as an associate. Therefore, he or she cannot write the magical acronym ACA, Associate Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. This is psychological traumatizing. The Yorubas will say, Ojudo Vili Ete Unikon, 
You have seen it with your eyes. You will not taste it. What a trauma. You have finished writing your exam. Nothing is holding you. And they say you cannot use the word ACA. You cannot even apply until you have 30 months of experience. Experience is a continuous thing. As I'm talking to you and getting the experience here, I've not done this before. Are you getting it? Experience is a daily issue. It doesn't come once and disappears. <laughs> Moreover, the dilemma of the accountant continues in his relationship with elders, peers and younger ones in the profession. In other profession, respect is accorded to seniority and people can easily work together as a team. In accountancy profession, such seniority is not noticed or respected. In spite of having associates and fellow members, no seniority is noticed or enforced. I will tell you a story, a true life story. Somebody, the first person in the family, the most senior, and the second person in the family, that a family of ten, the first person and the ninth person. One, the ninth person became a lawyer before the first person. When they were in court, as they finished judgment, they were going out. The first person said, told his younger brother, um, the, he said, take this bag and carry it for me. The younger brother looked at him and said, we are in a court. <laughs> in other words, as far as the court is concerned, I am senior to you. When he has left, he has come outside. The elder brother then came and said, hey, hey brother, that bag was saying, bring it, let me carry it for you. Then they were outside the court. In other words, once they are in court, seniority is recognized. When somebody comes, even, this, even if the sun comes a minute before the court started, they will start from the sun. Is there any sun here? Yes, we are here. So let us accord the same seniority in accountancy profession. <laughs> Furthermore, in the medical profession, there are several areas of specialization, such as gynecology, surgery, pediatrics, and so on. No so in accounting. Even the eventual division of members into faculty in ICANN has not solved this problem. The accountant is a trained capitalist. He or she does not does everything by himself or herself. It is possible to see several legal practices in one building of about 10 floors. It is not easy to see accountants in one building. Let it have where, where, where only two floors. They cannot stay together. Let us change our attitudes. That is what I'm calling for. That is the paradigm shift I am calling for. Finally, the dilemma, the dilemma of the accountant is that there is little or no relationship between theory and practice, between gown and town, between the academia and practice. Other professions, just like legal profession, medical profession, are allowed to practice, in, to practice their profession while lecturing in tertiary institutions. These professions relate theory to practice the academia to practice and gown to town. This linkage has developed these professions. The medical profession has developed tremendously. The legal profession has developed tremendously. It is not so in the accountancy profession. It is not so. We don't have that relationship. We don't have that law that allows us to practice. So those in practice are facing their business. Those in the academia are facing their business. There is no ground where we interact. We don't interact. I say when they call M MCPE, we go to MCPE. It should go beyond MCPE. MCPE is a, a mandatory continuous education program. Except in that forum. That way we go. After that, all of us will go his own way. Uh, the other one will go, the other one will go. It is not the best. Let us find a way of changing it. From the reorientation of the accountant using the reconciliation model, from the foregoing, it is obvious that the accountant needs a paradigm shift. He or she requires a reorientation from individualism to collectivism, from self-effort to group effort, from republicanism to respect for elders, peers, and younger ones. As indicated earlier, reconciliation involves comparing two or more sources of information, identifying and analyzing differences, and making corrections as required. The reconciliation model implicitly assumes that there are varieties of perspectives in any given issue and then finding resolution to these divergencies of opinions. There is no issue. If, if I give somebody a blow, now if I give him a blow, all of us will interpret it differently. That is what human beings do. 
It depends on the responsibility of reconciliation model to use reconciliation model to, uh, to reconcile our various views so that we can have one view. Then let's go ahead. We will talk more. The accountant should therefore understand that he or she needs to reconcile his or her position with the position of others in any relationship, be it official, professional, personal, or social. A tree cannot make a forest. Together we stand, divided we fall. A single stick of broom is easily broken, whereas a bundle of broom cannot easily be broken. <laughs> Mentoring, teamwork, and gojo models that are required for the reorientation of the accountancy profession are also essential for the reorientation of Nigeria as a whole. Nigeria needs to deploy the mentoring model to prepare her youth for the future. She needs to ensure that all the geopolitical zones work as a team. This can be done by reconciling the values and position of different geopolitical zones to her aspiration for the future. So when I put and Nigeria, there are two different entities. Professional, account, uh, 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 account, professional accountancy body and Nigeria. The two bodies need reconciliation model. The same thing that is going in ICANN uh, or in professional accounting should also, is also going on in Nigeria. We don't mentor anybody. In fact, when you are mentoring, people will be advising you, ah, if you don't take time, they will push you out of the job and they will take over. But that is a lie. They cannot push you out because as you are teaching somebody what you know, you are also learning what you don't know. So that by the time somebody knows what you know, you have already learned something else. You are not easily pushed over. So let us not be afraid that somebody will push us over. So long as we are teaching the younger ones and also learning something new, don't be afraid to mentor the younger ones. Don't. Because they will learn from you and they will perform better. Acknowledgements. I could not have become a professor without the assistance of others. In this session, I acknowledge those persons who aided my success one way or another. I ever appeal in advance that if at the end of acknowledgments you fail to see your name or your contribution, kindly forgive me. It is not because you are not important or your contribution is not worth noting, mentioning, but it is because I am constrained by time and space. God, who gives the greatest and best reward, will surely remember you and reward you appropriately. I, I pray God, my maker and helper. In Him, I live, move, and have my being. Acts 17, verse 28. He lifted me from the mary clay and put my feet on the rock to stand. <laughs> Having lost my father when I was seven years old, I became a product of extended family philanthropy. If you like, teamwork. Teamwork. That's what brought me up, teamwork. I'm most grateful to my uncles, aunties, and their families. Sir and Lady Edward Ibini, KSM, JP, I showed my secondary and university education. Their daughter is here. Their daughter is here. If she's here, okay. God bless you. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Ebeni, both of pleasant memory, I showed my primary education. And Mr. and Mrs. Francis Mbiri Obuse, both of pleasant memory, showed me the gift of family. Mrs. Paulina John, my father's maternal first cousin, located and registered me in Ojue Public School, Mushi, Lagos. That is teamwork, powerful teamwork. I'm a product of teamwork. I'm very grateful to my models. Mr. Okafor, Felix Wan Kuyen, my father. Professor Abulime Richard Anao, the former vice chancellor. I do my heart for you, sir. Professor Esosa Bob Osaze, Pioneer Dean, Management Sciences, and former Dean, School of Postgraduate Study. I adopt my heart for you, sir. Professor B. A. Agbonifu, former Dean of Management Sciences. Professor F. R. O. Iyayi of Blessed Memory. Dr. Rastoki of Department of Business and Administration in the late 1970s. 
Mr. John Ebodahe, the first managing director of Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation of Blessed Memory. Dr. Michael Oladisu Odebody, managing director of the Fund Group Merchant Bank Limited. These taught me the rudiments of effective communication, either with students or persons. They demonstrated for me the art of selfless service, hard work, integrity, and actual leadership and management style. That is why I said earlier on that a person, a mentee, can have more than one mentor. I have named several persons here. Two of them are seated there. Both of them taught me different things. And the ones that are not here also taught me different things. So you can have somebody who is teaching you how to write paper. You can have somebody who is teaching you how to read. You can have somebody who is teaching you how to pray. So please, I recommend mentoring. I'm a product of mentoring. If I didn't learn from this man, I wouldn't be where I'm standing today. I'm grateful to the Vice Chancellor, Professor F.F. Oruwesen, fellow Nigerian Society of Virginia and his management team for giving me the opportunity and privilege to present this lecture and for appointing me the head of the Department of Accounting from July 1st, 2015 to June 30th, 2019. I'm grateful to Professor O.G. Oshodi, JP, for my promotion to the position of Associate Professor and appointment as full professor during his tenure as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Benin. I'm grateful to my teachers from primary school to tertiary institution. They include, but are not limited to Professor Adebayo Akrili, Professor A.B. Agbadudu, Professor Festus Iyayi, and Dr. Frank Dumu, all of blessed memory. Others are Professor A. R. Anao, Esosa Bobo Sase, B. A. Agbonifo, A. U. Inegbenebo, and Professor P. A. Donwa at the tertiary level. My secondary teach, uh, teachers include Mrs. M. A. Odubo, Principal, Wambasha Biology, A. U. Okocha Chemistry, Franklin Ideale Physics, Anthony Wuchare Mathematics, J. E. Osesepo, is, he, I, saw him, uh, uh, I saw him sometime today, if you say please stand up for recognition. He was here a while ago. Okay? J.E. Osesopo, <laughs> Economist. Okay, thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you. Anthony Ajone, English. Alex Alumona, Physics. Emelwe, Integrated Science. And Mr. Tony Ndukwe, Mathematics, among others. I thank my students at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels for the productive interaction we had. I regard my students as my future, for they are indeed the leaders of tomorrow. I'm particularly grateful to my PhD graduates, who ensure that I attain and maintain and remain at the cutting edge of knowledge. They are 25. By grace of God, I produce 25 PhDs. If you are here and you, have, you hear your name, please stand up for recognition. They include Drs. Amos Arushaben, Ofiafu Iya, Professor Alade Omoye, Dr. Kilian Ogedu, Dr. Mrs. Ofe Inua, Mrs. Dr. Emmanuel Davari, Lawrence Ibadin, Dr. Mrs. Ruth, Ruth Uroide, Dr. Mike Asekome, David Imombari, Donald Evelyn, Osasu Osariti, Kennedy Modugu. Kennedy Modugu is at the moment watching us through internet where he is based. Charlie West Epoibe, Nusa Ohomba, Geoffrey Audu, Dr. Beauty Yamu, Dr. Alexander Dapo, Kukura Bima, Dr. Ms. Evelyn Yamu, Dr. Ms. Chiwe Amake, Doc, Dr. Ide Omobali, Victor Odu, Valentino Sayi, and Uju Mafiana. I appreciate my colleagues in the Department of Accounting and the Faculty of Management Sciences for their encouragement. Because of time, I didn't list them. We are more than 60 academic staff in accounting alone. Uh, if you list some name and you don't list others, it becomes a problem. So, I have decided in the book there, they are all listed in that book. Their names are there. But for here, somebody is watching me. If I sit a particular time, it will clock me off. So, please, permit me that your names are not mentioned here, but they are in the lecture books. All of them are in the lecture book. I remember with gratitude, my colleagues at Group Merchant Bank for creating a wonderful culture where we were 
each other's keepers. This includes Dr. M. Oladi Son, Deputy Managing Director, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Ambassador Gosin Echekile, Venerable Muiwa Oyewali, Honorable Presley M. O. Messrs. SOPD, Kerry Oyahiri, Ade Emi Ade Tuji, BC Ajibuye, Tijani Abdullahi, Afolavi Ode Tunde, Ayodele Eidu, Bimbo Muntude, Odiara, Rotimi Jayola, Emmanuel Emodi, and Ms. Lushola Fakuri, and many others. And great to Mr. Emeka Ugoju, Chairman Chief Executive of Emma Name Investment Limited, and his wife, Mrs. Inkechi Ugoju, for allowing me to undertake my PhD while working as Group General Manager, so Chief Operating Officer for Emma Name Group of Companies. And great to my other colleagues who had fought for me while on doctoral program, Mrs. Peter Ebota of Emma Name Investment Limited. Paulinus Didigu, Eriku Bapuku, and Sugar Yahara of Atlantic Waste Management Limited, Sonny Didigu of Enviro Laboratories Limited, Ms. Ed Edima Otokon of Book Service Limited, and Mr. Atan Onodu of Chivana Mans Limited, and Greucho, Mr. Emeka Ifezulke, the mining partner of KCP Partners, for his support and encouragement during my sojourn in the industry. And Greucho, to the council members, Council, members, management and staff of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria for upholding the tenants of the profession for over 50 years and providing leadership not only for accountancy profession in Nigeria but also for accountancy profession in Africa and participating in various bodies in the world. I also give to my friends and their spouses for expanding and staying on the cutting edge of spiritual knowledge. Dr. and Mrs. Mike Oheroya, Dr. and Mrs. Simeon Anowenevu Ifiri, Engineer and Ms. Steve and Panebi Opo, Dr. and Mrs. Omadili and Ife Iwa Boyo. And glory to Abishop B.A. Dasa of Blessed Memory, who ordained me into the Bible teaching ministry in 1995 in Charles Commission International Incorporated. And glory to all the members, all the ministers and members of Charles Commission International Incorporated under the able leadership of Archbishop M.E. Benson Dasa. I appreciate Professor. Reverend and Dr. Mrs. Obayagwan, Reverend and Dignity P.J. Hedu, all of them ministers and members of Church of God Mission, the CEO of Provincial Headquarters, my family, CGM Branch, for their prayers and spiritual uplifting. Please, if you are here, just raise your hand for God bless all of you for coming. Thank you. I am grateful to Christian Union, University of Benin, Benin City, and the Nigerian Fellowship of Evangelical students, knifers, for nurturing me spiritually. I appreciate my colleagues and friends in the fellowship, Venerable and Mrs. Sulomakun, Professor and Professor Mrs. Kingsley Aide, Professor and Professor Mrs. McDonald Idu, Professor and Mrs. MSO Asien, Professor and Mrs. Chooks Eboka, and Reverend and, Doc, and Dr. Mrs. A. Abikwi. I'm grateful to my childhood friends for creating an enabling environment to focus on the real issue of our time, getting quality education. They include Sir Joel Uweri, Mrs. Patrick Ibukuru, Ayo Oniemola, Gilbert Dibye, Mike Oku, Emmanuel Ekweni, and James Obuse. And go to my school and classrooms in Edeka, my school in Edeka. Dr. Godwin Orelu, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Paul Ebru. Mrs. Veronica Ibili, Ni Ikewe, Mrs. Antonia Felicia Ojogu, Ni Isiche, Mrs. Judy Divinua Onka, Ni Opo, Mrs. Gloria Okunji, Ni Odogu, Barista Aslem Ikediashi, Mrs. Kerry Goffrey, Ben Chijidi, David Iyere, and many others. I'm grateful to my parents in law, Mr. and Mrs. A. 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 Oko, for their care. I also appreciate their contribution the commission of their children to my present position, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Simeon and Florence Elia, Doctor and Mrs. Nathaniel and Nkechimwakwa, Reverend and Mrs. Solomon Anuche Oko, Reverend, Doctor, Reverend and Mrs. Samuel Oko, Minister and Mrs. Eugene and Sarah Oko, Bishop and Reverend Mrs. Henry and Helen Salyu and Mr. John Oko. I'm grateful to my parents. Mr. and Mrs. Felis and Maria Wang Kunye for their very strict upbringing. I appreciate my siblings and their children for their continued support. Barista Gordon Solomon and Tobori Oluwatoni Okafor, both of blessed memory. His honor, G.N. 
Dili and Engineer Noye Okapo, Engineer and Mrs. Ngozi and Rosalind Chukwiki, Mr. and Mrs. Ifani and Kedilim Odom, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Udoka Ikechuku, Mr. and Mrs. Okudili and Sarah Ikechuku, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen and Caroline Isije, Reverend and Mrs. Osai Kubo and Isoma Udunije. Furthermore, I hereby thank my better half, the wife of my youth, Dr. Mrs. Chukudinju Joyce Okafo, who has always been there for me through thick and thin. I thank her for her continuous and, and all her loyal support. I appreciate our children, Engineer Chimumba Okafo, Mr. and Mrs. Loki and Chukujindu Damisa, Ms. Chidebube Okafo, for their understanding and continuous support. I appreciate with love our bundle of joy and source of continuous thanksgiving to the Almighty God, our granddaughter, Ms. Emanuela Chime Damisa. I am grateful to the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICAD, family and friends who sponsored this lecture. Finally, I thank you all for attending to this lecture. May God bless you. It is my then desire that accountancy profession, accountancy as a profession, will rise up to the challenge and use all the resources within our arsenal to re reorganize, reorientate, and redirect ourselves for better performance of the accountant by adopting mentoring, teamwork, and reconciliation models to resolve all outstanding issues, to make re recommend, uh, recommendations. For the way forward for accountancy profession in Nigeria is a difficult task that must be done. We have had professional accounting body, ICANN, for more than 50 years. Let us move beyond recognizing faculties in ICANN and having more than four regulating accounting bodies to just one professional body as the engineering, medical, and legal professions in Nigeria. All different parts of engineering, medicine, and legal profession are under one regulating body in each of these professions mentioned. Using the reconciliation model, this feat can be achieved in the accountancy profession. Let us identify the reconciling items of different accounting professional bodies and reconcile all into one. Members can then specialize in different parts of accounting of their choice. Specialization could be in auditing, management consulting, taxation, forensic accounting, and so on. Each writing the applicable qualifying examination for his or her choosing area of specialization. Just as current registers, all engineers in all areas such as mechanical, civil, structural, production, and so on. And also, the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria registers all medical and dental graduates before they start writing their qualifying exam for specialization in their chosen area. Moreover, those who have concluded their provisional examination should be allowed to register immediately as associate member so that they can use ACA after their names. Experience comes gradually. If you take a CV, you see somebody has ICANN 1980, and you take another CV, somebody has ICANN 2018, you know that the 2018 is a green horn, needs experience gradually. With logbook or whatever, you can then train the 2018 to become, have the practical experience. But let the person answer ACA. It is traumatic when you are qualified. You are still going, others are answering BSC, ACA, FCA. You are there, you have finished your exam, you are there still answering BSC. They will look down on you. They will assume you are a nobody. Meanwhile, they, they, they have forgotten that you have concluded your exam. Please, those who are representing ICANN, I know the ICANN representatives here, take the message back to the council. This, uh, any graduate should be allowed to use the word ACA. Then you can train the person practically with a logbook. No matter where the person is in the world, he can, through a logbook, tell you the kind of practical experience he or she is going through. There are different models for organizing professional bodies in accounting. It does not have to be patterned after United Kingdom model or the American model. Let it, just, let it be just a functional Nigerian model. After all, Nigerian federalism is very different from American federalism or any federating state. 
Let us be simple Nigerians. Let us be simply Nigerians and our country's professional body, simply Nigerian. Enough of doing fighting. Enough of the unhealthy competition among accounting professional bodies in Nigeria. Furthermore, in Nigeria, we need to rethink our way, the way we work and how we train our youths for the future to be effective workers and leaders. We need to consider very seriously the issue of mentoring and teamwork. Let us realize that no single person knows it all. But together, we can do better as individuals, as professional body and as a nation. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live the accountancy profession. I thank you all for attending. session started, the inaugural lecturer met me and reminded me of one thing. Before his lecture, he reminded me again. After his lecture, he came to remind me that the woman that gave him a good wife is here, the mother-in-law, Mrs. J.C. Oko. Say, Mama, this year is 85 years old. May God bless you, Ma. I am sure his inaugural lecture is complete. In no particular order, we want to welcome and recognize each and every one of us that have come to be a part of our usual tradition in the University of Benin. Please permit me to welcome from ICANN. Double Chief, Chief Oye Akinsuleri. A 
member of the Governing Council of ICANN is also here, Jude Sonny Ebu. We want to welcome you, sir. Jude Folonsho M. We want to welcome you. Professor Iyoa Francis, we welcome you. Professor Emoni Kende, we welcome you. Our very own, the past chairman ICANN, Beni and District Society, the current chairman CITN, Alaji Aro O Alawo. Mr. Ayodeji Adeni, we want to welcome you. Safemi Ajibude, I want to believe I'm correct, we want to welcome you, sir. Mr. Femi Adeyanju, we welcome you. They are all FCA. May I recognize the school teacher of the inaugural lecturer, Reverend John Osesebo. Want to welcome you? For those of you that reside in or three or four or one and or two, there is a name you always hear. He is here today and it has always come. But you don't know he is the one. He is the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Benin, Professor and Mrs. A. Aro Anao. When you say Anao, you know what I mean. We want to welcome our Emerita professors. Emeritus Professor. Anya, we want to welcome you, sir. Emeritus Professor Aro Elao. We welcome Professor Bob Osaze. We also want to welcome Professor Ikwaria. We welcome you, sir. I wish to also recognize His Honor Dele Okafo, Chief Registrar. We want to welcome you, sir. We also recognize the presence of Professor John Ogene. We welcome you, sir. Professor Priest Swimos Isadomi. We welcome you. I also want to recognize the presence of Professor Chuke Owunde, HOD Banking and Finance, Faculty of Business at Me, UNM. We welcome you, sir. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the list before me is very long. Permit me to let us know that Professor Roberto is seated. Prof, we want to welcome you. Thank you very much for coming around. The immediate past. CMD UBTH is seated, Professor Mike Ibadi. We welcome you, sir. The one time BBC admin is also seated, Professor Okoya. <laughs> Professor Mokba is here. There is one man that is regarded as the monitor of inaugural lectures, Professor AC Ogu, the only AC. We want to welcome you, sir. Venerable Professor Mon Wandiani, we recognize your presence. Thank you all for coming around. This inaugural lecture, because University of Benin has decided to go global, is streamed live on www.news.uniben.edu. At every inaugural, you can join us online and you'll be with us. It is University of Benin, UNIVEST. Immediately after the inaugural lecture, the inaugural lecturer said there is seniority in every profession. Students, only our guests should go to EIE Hall.
there is no lecture for today. It is for their refreshment. While for students, you must wait to be mentored. And the only way to mentor you is to be very patient. After this inaugural lecture, please prepare for your exams. The Vice Chancellor will lead the procession out of the auditorium immediately after the Uniben Anthem and the National Anthem. Thereafter, others will follow. May we rise. Uniben Anthem. of the National Anthem.